Hi, I'm Dave Nichols, editor of V-Twin Magazine. Few writers would argue the fact that a motorcycle can be a piece of art, and sometimes a Harley can inspire fine art. Scott Jacobs' work is a perfect example. San Diego artist Scott Jacobs is bringing motorcycle art out of the garage and into the living room. Well, that's all I really need is reference. I actually made the bike larger. I'm in front of an easel by myself all day, hoping that I'm doing something that's going to touch people, that they're going to enjoy to look at. And then the only way to find that out is to come to an event like this and actually spend some time, talk to people, and get their feelings about what I've done. And if I've touched them and they enjoy it, and then every hour I spend in front of the easel is worth it. He captures the essence of a motorcycle and the era of that bike and the rider at that time. It's a way of life and you can feel that in his paintings. It's those little subtle things that it's just, it amazes me. All the engine parts, to the chrome, to even seeing palm trees shining in the chrome. Looking at it, it makes me want to jump on my bike and ride. Working from his home studio in Southern California, Scott has perfected a variety of techniques to turn this into this. The passion about the paintings started with the love for the motorcycle and to try to do something that I wanted to hang on my wall as part of my life, because I think that's what art is all about. And like the master builders who create art from metal, Scott draws on his talent, skill, and experience to create each motorcycle. I spent four months on the actual painting. It was the most time-consuming painting I've ever done, was this particular piece. And this was a painting that was commissioned by Harley Motor Company for their 100th anniversary. My objective was to show every tank a little bit of every engine so you could see the evolution of how the engines have grown over the years and how the badges have changed over the years, the actual logos on the actual tanks as well as the shape of the tanks. Each painting begins with a photograph which is translated to a line drawing on canvas and like building bikes improvisation is part of the process no matter how realistic the painting. Normally I would have the edge of the spring you know pretty straight but these old springs are bent. It comes in and out. If this was a brand new bike or a restored bike where this was a new paint job and this was perfect, I could save probably three, four weeks just in time doing that. But what's exciting about it for me is, is that, is the chips, is the, is the scratches, is all the patina work. That's what's exciting about this piece. Painting a new motorcycle is cool too, but this is really challenging. This, this is what people would, this is the wow factor in the art. Each of the bike paintings is the result of hundreds of hours of attention to detail with a tiny brush. Got to know a lot about the bikes too. You got to know how these parts are supposed to look. Now that looks pretty cool. See in here, these colors over here are really dead, so I pumped them up just a little bit more. I made them a little browner. And I just need a couple more little highlights in there. That one is pretty. But Scott doesn't work totally alone. His daughters help with the framing. The white was down a little bit. That's okay, you don't have to knock those in. And Scott's wife, Sharon, helps out on the business side of things. All right, thank you. Enjoy the piece. Okay, bye. Scott only has three weeks to finish his latest piece. Like most of his work, he starts with the background and builds forward. This is the photo reference for it. It's a 1958 Panhead. And this is a commission painting for Gettysburg Harley-Davidson. So that's what this project is for. And it's been drawn out. And so far, the only thing that's been done to it is the motorcycle has been covered with tape. In all of his paintings, Scott outlines the bike shape in the foreground, then masks it off to work on the background. This is the same technique that somebody painting a motorcycle would use. They would tape around the stuff that they don't want to get paint on. So what I'll do next is I'll bring more black, but I'll use a sponge up in this area to try to come up with some pattern. It doesn't look like much yet, but once you start putting the other colors, it starts giving you a lot of depth. That doesn't look good. <laughs> they don't look like trees? No. What do you mean? I don't know. It's missing something. I'm done. Leaves? Yeah. I'm done. It's done. It's starting to get some life to it. Start giving us some depth. The next thing I would do is the dirt, and then when I peel that off, boom, it'll just pop. We have signs in our booth that actually say, these are not photographs. I trace the edge of where the 
motorcycle wheels are. And then this space in here is where the drop shadow is going to be. If airbrush is the perfect tool for it, then that's what I'm going to use. Most of my paintings are 95% brush, just brush. I'll use an airbrush for a slight, some kind of effect. I'm just checking my edges to make sure that I got it. Now you can see why I put the tape down there, so that I don't lose this edge. When we come back, Scott finishes the panhead, and we'll find out how his paintings are turned into affordable art prints. San Diego artist Scott Jacobs is world-renowned for his photorealistic paintings, and his Harley-licensed originals can fetch upwards of $50,000. It's like putting a bike together. I mean, you're picking away every little piece. You're adding every little piece, piece by piece. And eventually you have a full motorcycle. The only difference is you can't start it up and ride it down the street. Scott typically works on several paintings at a time. Most of the time I'll start with blocking in colors because it'll start giving me the shape of the bike. Otherwise, it's like looking at a snowstorm all day. It actually bothers your eyes. You know, patience is critical to my style of painting. I've seen a lot of other artists, you know, they can do a painting in an hour. But just because my stuff is so meticulous and so detailed, yeah, you definitely need patience. These nuts and bolts are a pain in the butt, man. I mean, these take quite a bit longer to, than to build a motorcycle most of the time, and they sell for more than most of the motorcycles out there. You know, some of these Harley paintings are $60,000, $70,000. For, for the original. You could get a pretty incredible custom bike for that kind of money. But a new printing process makes his pieces available to a whole new market of collectors. Scott's prints are created at Mac Fine Art and Design in Florida using a high-tech process called gicle. Gicle is a French word and it actually means ink spray. It is an exact reproduction of the artist's work. We use this Hasselblad H1. It's 28 megapixels when it's all done, so we get fine resolution on it. This $20,000 camera takes 16 separate images of a single painting, which are then combined electronically to perfectly recreate the original. We use a software called FlexColor. It works perfectly with the Hasselblad. I don't even touch the camera once it's set up. Everything is done through here. The whole exposures, aperture, everything. The high-resolution photograph is color-corrected, and any flaws are retouched. Trying to clear up some of the spots in here. It took a week to just touch it up to get it color-corrected, to clean up all the specular highlights and things like that before it can even go to the printer. The image is then printed and coated using a special process. It makes for an amazing reproduction. If you look at this and the difference in the way the colors pop, you can see how dull these are going in here and see how much that varnish coating really improves and pops the colors. One thing that's not part of the print, Scott's signature. He signs every one individually, and each limited edition is numbered for authenticity. The reason we go with the gicle process is because it's, it's such an exact duplicate to my original, and it gives you the feeling of the original because it's printed on the same canvas as I paint my original. It's signed in the same place as the original. It's signed with the same type of pen I signed the original on. Yeah, I've got a problem with this one here. Actually, this one. Too. There's no Scott Jacobs outlet store. If a print isn't perfect, it's destroyed on the spot. Back in San Diego, Scott is finishing up the details on the 58 panhead painting. I'm just doing the finishing touches on this. I've got about almost 200 hours into this now. I mean, look at the tiny lettering in here. I just uh, hold my breath and get in there and just peck away at it. Oh, I get real happy with the engine. The engine came out great. Because the photograph, I'm just using it as a reference. You know, I want to pop it beyond that. Take it to the next level. And then the next step for me is to varnish it. I'll varnish over the whole thing. Um, and it really, actually, the varnish pumps up the colors and makes them brighter, and uh, the contrasts really stand out real nice. Scott's greatest satisfaction comes in sharing his art with other riders. It just feels like it's there. Like you it honestly looks mm -hmm. like the little rivets are like sticking out. It's three-dimensional. It definitely is three-dimensional. It's incredible. Beautiful I mean, work. Scott just outdoes himself every year. I love it. It's gorgeous. 
People want to hang on their walls what they enjoy in their life. Maybe it's of their bike, maybe it's of a bike they aspire to own that's on their wall, and they can actually still get that kind of feeling. They get reminded of it all the time as they walk by it every day. I wanted to elevate the image of motorcycles, the image of Harley Davidson, and do some fine art images that would people would be proud to hang in their living rooms. And I think we accomplished that.